And I suppose, especially with Omicron, given how much more infectious we know it is compared to other forms of this virus, I suppose hospital infection is a bigger concern than even previous iterations of this virus. Well, a bit of the data that I'm really interested in, Tom, are those people who die with COVID or with Omicron, if you like, because, you know, it quite could be the fact that they die of something else. But because they um, contract uh, um, the, the new variant or, or COVID, perhaps even while they're in hospital, they'll still be down as a COVID death. Now, is that necessarily um, what we really want to be seeing in the data? You know, you have to dig a little bit beneath the data to see that. But if we can keep people out of hospital, keep people um, away from placing um, the strain on the NHS, I think that is the key to try and make sure that we don't have the more severe restrictions, including lockdown. And because it's the last thing uh, that I want to see, and I think it's the last thing that most, most people want to see, especially with all the challenges relating to the economy. Now, of course, I, I, I think I'm right in saying that uh, death certificates record the primary cause of death rather than just whether it is with COVID or not. But those take several weeks to process. So the data really lags there. It makes it hard to make decisions. And, and, and talking about those decisions, the Cabinet meeting yesterday that stretched on for almost three hours and decided to not decide anything at this stage at all. Um, is that good governance? Well, look, I mean, I think the arguments are finely balanced. And you've got to appreciate that ministers, in particular the Prime Minister, is um, receiving a whole host of analysis, worst case scenarios, quite often from modellers, from SAGE and from others. But he's also facing relentless pressure from the media as well to um, try and, and, and do something, if you like. But quite often, doing nothing is sometimes the right decision and trusting people to make their own decisions. I really hope, and we'll have to wait and see, see what the data suggests, but I really hope that Omicron is a milder form of disease. We won't see the hospitalizations that we've seen with other waves because of our vaccination program, because of the booster. And um, so sometimes it's, it, it is a watch and wait. And if we do end up with the kind of Christmas and the holiday period that we all want to see, it will be because people have held firm and, and, and not made those decisions um, to, to lock us down. Now, it could, as I say, it is a finely balanced argument, but I, I certainly come down on the watch and wait side. Now, 100 of your colleagues rebelled against this government on the Plan B vaccine passport measures uh, for large events and for nightclubs. J just how much larger would a rebellion be for more stringent restrictions? We've heard suggestions that indoor mixing may well be banned through January. Is that a realistic prospect, given the composition of the Conservative Party? Look, there's no doubt this has been incredibly difficult for many of my colleagues. It was incredibly di difficult for me, Tom, because I um, have been a COVID uh, rebel in the past. I've rebelled on previous um, restrictions. Now, I didn't rebel this time because I thought what was proposed it was quite limited. And if it meant that we could have the Christmas that we all want, I think it was worth doing. That combined with the booster campaign. But it will be very difficult for many colleagues, I dare say. So if there are to be further restrictions, that case has to be made um, very, very powerfully. The question that I have is how can we prevent this being a yearly cycle? If we, if we lock down, if we put stringent restrictions in place now because of the strain on the NHS, what, what are the guarantees this won't happen every year? We can't have a situation where every single year we're placing restrictions on the economy. We're, we're potentially locking down um, because, because of this. We have to learn to live with COVID. That was a line that I heard very clearly from the Prime Minister, and it's something that I, I truly believe in too.